All right, folks, we're joined on the Boss Man Show by Coach Brian Newberry, Navy midshipman out of the American Conference out of Annapolis, Maryland. Coach, I love him the beard, man. I wish I could grow one like you, man. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Hey, you got a pretty good one yourself. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it like yours, man. I think I'll get yeah. to fill in the, 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 the right yeah. way again. Man. I have to start over again. <laughs> Not as much space coverage, but sometimes that's a good thing. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, uh, you was DC there for for, for yeah, from nine nineteen on. He got the head coaching mm -hmm. job. So, how does it feel for you to move over that one seat, man? I know when you're assistant coach, man, you you D coordinator, you're not the head guy in charge. But now, how's it been being moving over that that one chair now, leading the whole program, man? Yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been good. It's it's been interesting. You know, I uh, enjoy being the defense coordinator here and, and really relish that role and, and had a good time doing it. And uh, so, so the transition, you know, it's kind of unexpected, obviously, and and uh, kind of thrust into this into this position. But incredibly grateful uh, for the opportunity. I think, I think this is one of the best jobs in the country. Um, you know, to be a first time head coach and be able to do it at the Naval Academy, and you know, really, what a, what a dream come true. And Coach Newberry, you know, my father's a coach. He's eighty three years old. Uh, you know, he wanted me to go to coaching, but I told him I, I just had I just didn't have it in my heart to be a coach. I, I feel like. I'm too competitive. You know, sometimes I can't turn off those things that we get going. We get we get excited. So I'm not good at this. I said, I'm going to be in radio. But for you, Coach, my dad all tells me about he was wanting to help impact young men. So what was your why to want to get in coaching after you completed your career there at Baylor back in the 90s there? Yeah. Well, I didn't know right away that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, kind of took some time off, trying to figure some things out. Um, you know, my high school coaches had a, had a great impact on me. Uh, didn't know what direction I wanted to go and, and uh, really got into, into coaching because of them and because of the impact that they had uh, on my development, you know, as a young man. And uh, also witnessed the, you know, the fun that they had, the camaraderie uh, that they had with, and the relationships with the rest of my, my teammates. And, um, and so I, I, I got into the same reasons that your dad did. You know, I want to develop young men, enjoy being around them, love the game, obviously. And, and uh, there's really no better place in America to, to do that. You know, this is truly – a developmental program here, uh, especially in, in today's climate in college football with the portal and the NIL and all that. Uh, we're not, we're not dealing in the portal. We're not going out and, and bringing in transfers and having a lot of guys exit our program. And so uh, this place nowadays is kind of a unicorn uh, and, and still truly a developmental program. And one of the, the many things I love about coaching here. And Coach Newberry, when you was a DC, DC auto stops, you never had Kansas State here, being in Navy. How did you, for you prepare to become a head coach? Because I know when I was a co host earlier in my career, I was always thinking about it in my head how I would do if I was actually the main host. So, how do you be, how do you go about preparing for that opportunity while you're still doing your job as coordinator, but also knowing in your head you love to have the opportunity, wanted to become a head coach or, or a lead as a my case, have my own show? Sure. Now, that's a great question. I think for me, it may be a little different than than most. You know, I, I uh, being a head coach was never really the end game uh, necessarily for me. It never was the end all, be all. Really loved being a coordinator. I really enjoyed that role. It really wasn't until maybe the last couple of years that uh, I really started to think about and see myself in that role. And uh, uh, Coach Niamatololo played a big role in that. Um, sort of Brian Bohan at Kennesaw State. You know, seeing those guys do it the way they did it. Uh, and and still have balance and still be able to spend time with their families and, and do it the right way. That kind of opened my mind um, to 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 being in that role. And I think as an assistant coach, you're always preparing for that. You know, I've been around a lot of really really good coaches. Uh, I think every stop that I've had, I've, I've learned something from from somebody. And you're around really good coaches that you want to emulate. Uh, and you're around coaches that maybe you, you see you'd like to do things a little differently. Um, so you take the good and the bad, and, and you kind of start to form your own thoughts on, on what you really would want to look like. And uh, so I've, I've been really fortunate, been around some great ones um, and really just kind of uh, take some things from, from those coaches and, uh, and merge those with, with my vision of what I want it to look like. Now, Coach of Newberry, now being at, at the Naval Academy, how was it for us recruiting young men? Is it you always say the number scholarships that an FBS school would have? I know I, I, I played, I played I was at Tennessee State. We only mm -hmm. had, we was FCS, we only had, 63, I think that's all we had. So how does it affect you off of recruiting the Naval Academy, get, getting the right guys in there, and get getting the fire, finding the right balance, build, build your team, and build this program? 
Yeah, uh, recruiting's different here, uh, for sure. You know, we've, we've got to cast a really broad net. You know, we recruit nationally. Uh, so to go out and find the, the, the type of players that can play at this level is one thing. Uh, number two, to find young men that are admissible into the Naval Academy. You know, it's number one public school in the country. So uh, you got to be qualified to get in here, you know, academically as well. Uh, and then to find a young man that's willing uh, to take on that, that, uh, that role of serving his country. Um, and take on that that challenge and that privilege of doing that. Uh, it's a unique find, and uh, so we've got to cast, like I said, a really really broad net to find those guys and and uh, and to get them here on campus. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about this place uh, and what the military side of things looks like. And I think when we get kids here and they see how beautiful our campus is, uh, how beautiful Annapolis is, everything that this place has to offer and what it can do for your future, at that point it becomes a lot easier of a process. And with being so close to the D.C., you could go to the Pentagon and go over there and learn mm -hmm. there, connect with people in, go in federal government right now because, you know, a lot for a lot of us, like you and I both know very well, playing college football, it, it, the NFL is not, not going to be all our end games. Mm -hmm. So you have to have some to fall back on. What better way, Naval Academy background and being close to D.C. to meet with people, internship, and learn and get those connections mm -hmm. to help you once your career ends. Yeah, certainly it's a great part of the country. A lot to offer, as you said, you know, in D.C., you've you got Baltimore close by, uh, a ton of schools around us. Um, really, anything you want to do, um, it's, you want to go watch NFL uh, teams, you want to watch baseball, you want to watch basketball, you want to go to concerts, uh, you want to eat any kind of food you want. I mean, you got access to that right here, you know, in, in Annapolis. And Coach Newberry, talk about the American of the Conference. You know, I feel like it does not give just due for his it's been a good football conference as, as it should. What about that conference and, and how the talent level you go against every week and how that can help a young man until he get drafted and hopefully he'll get a waiver to play in the NFL before he does a service. But what about just the America as a whole for that conference and what you all play against during, in, in conference play? Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an outstanding conference. Um, you know, we caught one of the uh, uh, Power Six conferences and, uh, and there's a lot of changes uh, as of late to our conference. We have some teams leaving the Really good football teams, obviously, uh, but we got some really, really good ones coming in. Love the part of the country that we that we play in, uh, playing a lot of good market areas, and and uh, so you know we're on TV every week, obviously. Uh, really good competition. Uh, we had ten players from our our league get drafted this year. I think it was fifteen the year before that, and so uh, people recognize it's, it's it's really good football, and and uh, you're gonna have an opportunity to compete against some of the best in the country week to week here, and uh, so I think the conference really really sells itself. And how now with you being on staff already, how good was it for you all to have spray practice? Kind of you can jump in there, kind of assess where guys are, and they all know who you are because they you've been in the program, you probably have to recruit, recruit them. So how was that with your guys see you now being the head man and cut up those workouts in summer so we know to work on come back for fall camp here? Yeah. You know, I, I've been here for four years, but you know, exclusively my my job was essentially to be the head coach of the defense. And so didn't really know, you know, a lot of the offensive guys outside of some of the guys I recruited or guys that I dealt with on, on the scout team or or guys I just passed in, in the hallway in the weight room and, and uh, chatted them up. But so, you know, first thing I, I had to do, and I'm still continuing to do it, is get to know all of these players and, and build that connection, and that trust and that relationship. But uh, certainly it was an advantage uh, knowing that I'd been here. Um, this is a unique place uh, and you kind of got to get to know the ins and the outs of the academy and, and all the layers. Uh, on the military side of things in the yard, uh, but it was good. You know, we were able to keep a lot of our coaches um, and, of course, brought in some, some new guys as well. Um, so spring ball hit the ground running. I uh, thought it was was a really good spring for us, uh, maximized all, all of our opportunities. And, and we hired a new offensive coordinator, Grant Chesnut, uh, who's doing a phenomenal job and uh, really built an offense from scratch. You know, when he got here, they took about five, six weeks kind of getting that staff room and, and go to work. And, and so to see that kind of come to fruition, during the spring ball and, 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 and see us build that out and be a part of that um, and, and kind of be dialed into the offensive side of things was, was unique and different for me. But I think it's gone about as smooth as it can be, you know, to this point. Um, but kind of where I hoped we'd be um, as a football team at this point, you know, when you, when you asked me maybe three months ago. Uh, so I'm really pleased uh, where we're at, uh, our progress, the buy-in of our players uh, with what we're doing on both sides of the football with our new staff. I really couldn't be more pleased with where we're at. Uh, and I say that knowing that we, you know, we have a ways to go and we're still a work in progress, but uh, really happy about where we're at right now. And from a decoded 
expensive coach of Blueberry. How is it being man as the game gets more spread, having to play more nickel, more dime, having linebackers who can run down the field and actually cover receivers now? So how, defensively, how has it been in the chess match, man, nowadays, all this spread and passing the football, knowing when, when they run the ball, it's going to be probably inside zone, maybe a counter or a pitch or a trap or a dive. So it kind of takes away some options when they spread it, but also makes you have to have more athletic guys on the field. Yeah, I think just, I mean, we're just like everybody else in the country. You've had to evolve uh, in what you do defensively. And and uh, you may be looking for a different skill set, you know, at certain positions, especially in our league, to function. Uh, but, no, it's just, it's, um, it's a great thing about this game is it's always changing and evolving. And, and uh, you got to stay up with the times. And, and I think we've been able to do that defensively. I think the way that we're structured and built, you know, allows us to, to defend those types of teams uh, that we see week in and week out in our conference. No doubt. I tell you, Coach, my dad is you know, he's old school, wants to put in two back still. He, he, he hates all the spread. I mean, my dad hates it to a T. But I said, yeah. Dad, it's fun football, but I know it gives some guys more of a self play that's to figure out how to stop all these fast guys, man. These jet sweeps, all that stuff, man. I said, I, I enjoy it personally, but my dad, Coach, he says he's he has his, he says his fans, he writes on. I can't stand this. I don't like this. Uh, he's still scouting players. But, you know, Dad, you're retired, man. Relax. He, he can't give it up, Coach. You can't do it, man. Yeah. You know what you're seeing nowadays in, in, is, is the RPO stuff, the run pass option, which is an extension of the triple option, you know, it, it is all it is. You know, we see that all the time. It's just you're doing it a little more space nowadays. And the uh, the two-back stuff, the old school stuff that your dad likes, I mean, people are still doing that. You know, they're using the tight end in creative ways, with two-back sets and things like that. And, 11 and 12 personnel. And so, you know, um, it's cyclical, right? So what goes around comes around. It's always evolving, but it always circles back on um, some of the things that, that we've done in the past. And so I'm sure your dad can probably appreciate that too. Yeah, I told my dad, I said, I said, I said Dad, why did the NFL draft? I draft all these tight ends that are kind of like receivers. So mm -hmm. I said, the twelve personnel is kind of like the two back. I told him exactly the you just said. And I said, yes, also, you can also spread it out to, hey, I'm gonna put these two big freaks in the, in, in the slot here. Do something about it. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, it's all about matches, as he knows that. So talk, talk, talk about my dad, Coach Newberry. It's always fun, but I know he has that old school mindset. I'm more of the, I'm adapted to this new school way of doing things. It's like it's fun when we get those chats together, man. It's really interesting. To talk to my father, who played ball for years and coached for years. Yeah. To get him to see it a little bit how it's changing in ball, but still, still, it's still there. It's a little bit different now. That's right. Yeah. It's all the same. It's all the same. Just evolving a little bit. Now, last one I have for you, Coach. I know we talked about it before we got, got to record it here. Uh, your time here in Atlanta. Talk about their time here at Kennesaw State, Atlanta, mm -hmm. the city, and, and just being around here with all the talented football players here in the state of Georgia and coaching in high school here. Yeah, my time there was awesome. Uh, I said my wife and I love living there. Uh, we lived up in Kennesaw, you know, just north of Atlanta. Uh, but love that area. Um it's obviously a hotbed for football, a lot of talent down in that state. And uh, what a unique opportunity and a great learning experience that was for me being there when we started that program. Uh, getting to work for Brian Bohannon, uh, who I thought did an exceptional job there. We got things going pretty quickly. Uh, I learned a ton from him. and, and uh, But to have that opportunity to be a part of a program that's getting started and building it from scratch and, and creating a culture and all that goes with that was, uh, was an invaluable experience for me and, and uh, certainly helped in a lot of ways, preparing me for, for this role. And what was your favorite food spot here, Coach? I know the food was really good. We talked about this. What was, was your favorite food spot here, man? You know, I, I had a bunch of them. Um, there's so many different types of food there. There's a little bit of an international flavor in Atlanta. You get really anything you want. Uh, but, you know, I love down down south, home home comfort food. But uh, Fox Brothers was a, was a great barbecue spot that uh, that I like quite a bit. It actually catered my wife and I's wedding. Uh, so that's one, one spot in particular. But um, you know, we had a list of, you know, 10 or 15 restaurants that we really enjoyed going to. No doubt. You know, I, I can't lie, Coach. I love the Capitol Grill, man. Mm, I, love, I, I, I love that place, but I go there at least once a month. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't afford to go there once a month, but I, yeah, I certainly liked it. Maybe once a year on my birthday or something like that. Yes. Yes, indeed. But Coach Dewberry, good to catch up with you. I'm having the show again down the road, man. If you're down here recruiting, man, let us meet up with you and have a lunch with you if you're down here recruiting guys because I know you have that big net nationally, but I've definitely been cheering for you. I knew you was the council office. I want to show you some support, so I know that you know. Atlanta still loves you, man. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, man. It was a good visiting with you. Inside, Coach, you be safe, man.
You too. Take care. All right.